this is going to be a walkthrough of code I just wrote. I think I got to figure out where it's going to end up living. I think it's either going to be in um, CQ Terrain or CAD Query Helper. Most likely the helper library if I do this right. What I'd been thinking about is um, kind of repeated patterns and meshes and kind of exhausts and stuff like that. It's a common motif in like uh, GW smokestacks and other kind of stuff is you'll have, you know, like a gun barrel or something with a repeating pattern of some sort. Right. So I was thinking about like, well, what would it do to make that? And so I came up with this bit of code, which I'll throw into a, a GitHub gist. And then eventually it'll make its way into one of the GitHub repos. But it's easier here to just kind of talk about my mindset for how we got here. Demo time. We have this uh, bit of code called exhaust mesh. We can set a radius, which is um, the radius of this um, external cylinder, the main cylinder. We can set the total height of the cylinder. And then we have this mesh radius and mesh padding, which is the um, uh, internal radius of these little through holes, these cut holes. And if I change this pattern from add to cut, there you go, you can see what I mean by that, right? Um, I'm going to switch this back to add because if I get squirrely, it's much it's much quicker to do the add operation than it is to do the cut uh, you know, operation. So that's you can you can hit performance strains on that. So we'll do adds for now because that's a little bit safer. Um, and then we have so we have the um, radius of these cut holes, and then we have the padding, which is the distance on all sides between these uh, different cut holes. And then we have this column rotate, which is basically for each column up, how many degrees should we rotate the next column or next row, as it were. And if I do something like 27, I think that's a complete rotation, 26. Yeah, when I, when I had different sizes, you can you can mess around with that and get yourself into all kinds of interesting patterns going on. It's very easy to lose yourself in trying to figure out the distance. Yeah, something like that. If I do a cut. There we go. Cool. Yeah, there's all kinds of neat things you can do with that, right? All right, so we'll go back to add. And the whole idea is that the number of um, cylinder cuts uh, is all dependent on the uh, these external parameters. So if we go with, uh, change this back to zero. If we go with a height of say 15, everything should scale to go with that. If we go for a radius of say four, Goal should fill in to make up of that. And then if we start swapping out some of these parameters, so if we say we go to 1.5, uh, that should dramatically decrease the number of holes we'll get. Yeah, like that, right? And so instead of worrying about the individual placement or the repetition of the pattern or all that kind of stuff, um, what you're worried about is uh, more high level right, how the pattern looks, that kind of stuff. And there's some interesting scenarios. Looks like this is off a little bit. I'm not quite sure why yet. If I go to zero. Yeah, I'm getting some weird um, uh, off nuts there. Oh, well. Uh, but yeah, no, this is wicked cool. And let's just change this back to a cut. Did work in theory? Yeah, it did. Let me start messing with. 
I'm offsetting them a bit. So if we do it like, let's see, 14. But with that, with the cow rotating, you start getting into like those weird kind of spiral patterns and stuff that you find in nature. All right, uh, so the code. We have this thing called exhaust mesh. What that does is it builds out um, rows and it builds out columns. Or I should say, I, may, I might have that inverted right now. But right now, but what it does, I'll we'll switch this back to add. What you get is you have this concept of a row, which is one of these um, circular layouts. And then you have a concept of the columns. And if we switch this down to zero, you'll see these bump right up against each other. Yeah. OK, so a column is going up the height, and then a row is going across the um, x and y axes. Right. So when we get into this code, we have our exhaust mesh. We're going to make our master cylinder, which is this just this code right here. We're going to make our row pattern, which is called into this method called mesh pattern. We're going to pass in pretty much all the parameters we have except for call rotate. Mesh pattern is basically going to make um, our mesh cylinder which is one of these guys. And if we just turn return back mesh cylinder, you can see it. Bam. All right, so that it makes one cylinder. And you see the cylinder cuts through from one end to the next. So how we're doing that is we're basically taking the radius of the master cylinder as the height of our mesh cylinder. And then we're taking our M radius, which is our, our, our inner circle radius, and making that this guy right here. We're doing a 90, de 90 degree rotation. Otherwise, it would be going up and down the Z axis, right? It'd be centered on that. So we're going to do a 90 degree rotation. Then, do, 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 do I need to show? I can probably just change it to our pattern here. We'll do a return, something like that. Okay, there's our, our mesh cylinder, right? Then we make uh, a work plane for our row. I can probably rename that to row. Yeah, mesh we'll call it. Uh, and we're gonna work out some stuff. So we're gonna work out the circumference of the master circle. So we're, lo we're looking at the distance around the master circle where they're going to figure out how many times uh, this mesh is going to get repeated, right? This this uh, internal cylinder for our row. How many times do we need to repeat it? So we're going to take the circumference. We're going to divide it by the diameter of this circle right here. And then we're going to um, add in our uh, padding right here. We're going to get our diameter and we're adding our padding to, to uh, space it out, right? And because this is doing the circle for the, um, because it's repeated twice, you know, it's the, the, the left side and the right side, right? We only have to do this padding check like once. Here it's not times two or something like that because we've already done the cut twice. We're, with each of these cylinders, we're cutting two of our mesh holes. That's why that makes sense here and on the column where it's different. All right. So if our mesh modulus 2 has a remainder of 1, we get our mesh repeat. We're going to floor this out so we don't have any remainder on it. We get a, an integer number. If it's not an even number, we denote that's odd, and we're going to minus 1 off of that. And that avoids getting weird overlaps. If when we do, when we determine how many times to repeat it, if it's an odd number, we're going to make an even number. So we only have, because again, this is cutting both the, the, the left and the right side. So when we rotate it around, let's grab our mesh repeat. Mesh. 
when we rotate this guy around, it's cutting both the both sides, right? Um, so if it's an odd one, we'll get this weird offset. And I can show you what that looks like. Sure, why not? Let's see if it breaks here. We'll go back to our radius and say we'll make it 0.1. There we go. Fascinating. That broke it. So this is a case of where it's doing the mesh, but it had an odd one. So we have an odd number of cuts. And it should say as much in, unless I commented that code out. I did. And so if I bring this code back, here's our here's the case where it would be odd, but we intentionally made it even. And I'm doing this whole even logic because of that um, deal where I'm cutting both the both sides of the circle with one cylinder, right? If these were individual circles, it would probably line up a bit cleaner. But because I'm cutting both of them with each one, that's where we get into this weirdness that I got to do this, this logic. All right. Then we're going to take the total number of degrees in a circle. We're going to divide it by our mesh repeat. That's going to tell us how many times we need to iterate our for loop. Then we're going to have our... Uh, mesh, which is just an empty work plane up here, and to each one of those we're going to add, and I can probably just rename this to row. really doesn't matter much. Row, and I won't mess with it right now. All right, we're going to repeat it. We're going to add our cylinder, and we're going to apply rotation at each level. For the zero index, that's fine. We don't need to do any rotation, right? So we get this guy. All right, and then, so we've made our row. Now we need to make our columns. And this code I should probably break up into its own sub-method, right, for making the columns, because this, this um, method is doing too much work right now. But So we have our C pattern, which is going to be our columns. We're going to say how many times do we need to repeat this. And in this case, um, we have our the height of our master cylinder divided by the radius of the circle times two to make it the diameter of the circle. And then we're adding our padding uh, that we want around the circle. And we're timesing that by two. And the reason is, is because this isn't doing, you know, the left and right, we have to apply padding for the top of the circle and padding for the bottom of the circle, right? So in this case, all, all these times that we're doing end padding, we're including it here, we're timesing it by two. And that's where I got confuzzled with my code when I first did this guy, because I didn't understand why I had to do that padding times two. Anyways, so we got our for loop. We're going to say, uh, and we're of course, we're going to do a math.floor in order to make it an even integer. We're going to say for in range, our C repeat. That's going to set up the number of columns we're going to have. And we're basically going to apply a translate along the Z index. And we're going to add in our padding. And then we have this call rotate, but right now I think that's zero. How this looks is I can just return back the C pattern. And that should give you an idea of what we're looking at. Bam, this. And if we apply our rotate of, say, five degrees for each iteration, bam, we get these little gradual offsets and you make it more extreme, that kind of stuff. And I keep going back to that because that kind of stuff fascinates me. Being able to do that. All right. And then uh, here you can see the padding applied to. Bam. Okay. Nice. And then at the end of the deal, all we're doing is we are um, applying this against our cylinder. We're going to add our C pattern. If we don't do this translate, you'll see that they'll be off a little bit because the cylinder is centered, but our pattern is off by quite a bit, right? It's centered on this first um, row. Bam. So what we need to do is we need to translate this guy down half the height of our master cylinder plus the radius 
this we need to offset for this radius here we need to offset for our presumed padding right and something like that and that padding might be a little bit too aggressive in some circumstances or maybe not aggressive enough Yeah, there's something more to be figured out there. It's, it's probably based on whether the, the number of columns is odd or even, right? Yeah, so I bet if it's odd, I got to do something different. So the same way where I'm doing different logic for uh, odd and even rows, I probably, uh, yeah, odd and even row entries, I probably need to do the same for odd and even column entries. Right. Yeah, fascinating stuff. If we do this at 10, and then it looks okay at 10. No, it doesn't. Let's bring this down to 0.5. Go back to my original example. Let's see if it still looks borked. I'll set you back to 2. Do you still look messed up? Not quite so bad. Yeah, there's something still I gotta figure out with this offset because it's not it's not quite centered on this one and I what I expect is if it's got one two three four five six seven is it centered on you eh, kind of you're close to centered super duper close yeah something's a little wacky all right it's close though anyways so this code will end up, uh, I think it's going to end up going in CAD Query Helper. Because if I can refactor this enough, the particular type of shape shouldn't matter. You should be able to just feed it like a, uh, a 2D primitive and then extrude it out, right? So I should be able to just feed it a circle and then extrude it the distance I want. And then it's not exclusive to being just cylinders. It could be squares or triangles or any number, any any 2D shape that can be extruded is what I think this will end up living out to be. All right, that's my spiel. Cool.